I am Kathleen McGivern, and I'm Ms. Artastic, and welcome to the podcast. Also, I just want to say welcome to season two. I have made it into season two. I didn't tell you that season one ended, but it did. That's why there was, I think, a break of all of one month. Anyway, that's all I have time for. Back into it. Season two. Here we go. And in this season, we're going... Or sorry, in this episode. <laughs> season. Haha. <laughs> in this episode, we're going to be talking about autumn and all ideas for autumn. These are all free ideas. Um, you can take it and make it your own. I got five autumn are ideas that you can do in your amazing classroom whether you are a general teacher or an art teacher or if you are on a cart whatever it is hey this year we just all got to be flexible chill easygoing and these ideas are definitely easy to implement you can use whatever mediums you want and if you need a break hey grab your toque and scarf and let's get into it you're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Now, before we begin, make sure that you sign up right now for my free Making Art with Kids challenge where I challenge you to make art with kids. And I'm taking all kinds of pressure off because I'm offering a free art lesson that will teach line art and felt marker painting. So there will be no excuse for not making this happen. Dude, you're going to love it because it's going to come with the lesson plan handout. Literally everything you need to teach a gecko line art project. Best of all, you will walk away confident and your students are going to love it. So check it out by going to www.arttasticcollective.com forward slash challenge right now and sign up for this free challenge. Link to that will be in the description of this podcast episode or find it. Uh, at arttasticcollective.com. All right, so let's dive in on to this episode where I'm going to be talking about five autumn art ideas that you can simply and easily do in your classroom. I have a bunch of easy to do and prep ideas that you can use choice art mediums with and they will allow students to really immerse themselves in some autumn vibes So grab your plaid jacket, your toque, and scarf, and let's get into these autumn ready-made, simple, and engaging art lesson ideas for your amazing art classroom. All right, so the first one is an autumn sensory walk. I love it because it gives you some fresh air, and fresh air during... Um, Well, a pandemic is a lovely thing to have. So grab some sketchbooks or clipboards or drawing boards and a choice mark maker and head outdoors for this one. I suggest letting the students choose their mark makers or if you're not really into that, you can instead direct them like any medium but has to be a warm color or warm colors only or oil pastels only. The choice really is yours. You are the teacher. So next, take the class on a short walk around the schoolyard and really let them immerse themselves in the autumn experience. Ask them to walk in silence, but record all the sounds, feels, smells, and sees they have through drawing uh, on their page. When you return to class, they can practice writing a one-sentence artist statement or even a haiku. Or if they're older, you can expand upon that um, about their art autumn experience. Or you can have them turn the experience into autumn art compositions of their own choice. Or if you're interested in exploring more student choice art approaches. Next is an autumn leaf observational draw okay love this one any opportunity for observational drawing take it take it all right so once leaves have fallen you can bring in a box of fallen autumn leaves and have students select a leaf to draw from so this is an opportunity to bring out oil pastels soft pastels or even charcoal or watercolor paints have students place the leaves in front of themselves and have them draw it as they see it. And 
yeah, this would be an observational drawing. However, instead of using pencil crayons and pencils, the typical mediums, have them complete their observational sketches of leaves with a different medium, such as India ink. If you're in high school, for example, or for younger grades, pull out the oil pastels, the soft pastels, the charcoal or watercolor sets. Just let them explore the mediums, make a mark, and see what happens. Learning happens through experimenting and experiencing, not always direction. You never know what could happen, so plant a seed and watch it grow. Pumpkin and gourd art. Instead of leaves, you could bring in some pumpkins and gourds and set, set up a still life arrangement either at their tables, so like in the center of a table group, or Push away all the desks around the room to make a circle around the center and create a big still life arrangement in this room with a beautiful tablecloth and all. You can even add some like silverware that you find in a thrift shop or if you have some, bring it in. Um, just changing things up like this and surprising your students will engage them. Plus the pumpkins and gourds can stay as decorations in your room at least until the end of October or November depending on what you're cool with. So if you have a November Thanksgiving, hey, I guess it would still be okay for them. Uh, if you're in Canada or somewhere that has Thanksgiving at the beginning of October, we get kind of annoyed by the gourds by then. But you do you! And what makes sense in your own world. All right, have your students focus on one area of the still life arrangement and not attempt to draw everything. Bonus is if you can set up a light above the arrangement and turn off the rest of the classroom lights. And then you can get some really cool, obvious highlights and shadows. I like, uh, or well, okay, I'm, I'm going to be honest. When I was a sub like a decade ago, um, I went to this high school classroom and the teacher, uh, he got those construction lights. Like, you know, like the ones that have like the safety, like, uh, plastic cage around them those ones yeah you know exactly what I'm talking about maybe <laughs> anyway he had like extension cords going up and zap strapped into like the metal grids that hold those like weird plastic plaster like ceiling tiles anyways he zap strapped them along the metal grid part and then had those hanging down um over tables or over wherever he was doing still lifes and I always thought that was really cool. So that's an option. Um, maybe. Definitely check and see if that's okay with your admin before you start zap strapping lights. But I mean, like, if people are zap strapping, like, Christmas lights and those patio lights in their classroom, I don't see why that would be a problem. Anyways, it makes some good, uh, affordable, what's it called? Still life observational drawing lighting mood. Yeah. Kind of like what you experience when you go and draw still lifes or models in uh, university, but on a low budget. Anyways, it worked well, so I just turn off all the rest of the lights and then boom, lighting. All right, next thing, a uh, warm color mosaic. So you can let kids explore two art mediums and magazine, cl magazine clippings and colored paper and uh, let them create a warm color mosaic artwork of something they see in autumn this would be perfect for primary or elementary, such as a tree with no leaves, a squirrel, mushroom, acorn, pumpkin, or leaf. Just have fun and encourage them to use as much paper clippings as possible to create the thing while using other mediums to add color boosts, outlines, textures, or background details. Next is some autumn word art. So another idea that could be, could be that students write word, could be that students write the word autumn or fall. Uh, we refer to the season as uh, fall mostly here. Uh, but I often say autumn because my primary audience says autumn. Anyway, fall in uh, the box or bubble. Or you could do it. So the, basically what I'm saying is they can write the word autumn or fall in box or bubble letters or graffiti letters in the center of their page. And then students can draw autumn icons or illustrations around it to create some fun autumn themed artwork. So you could do that with any mediums. You could give choice art mediums. You could do ink and watercolors, whatever you want. Go for it. 
Um, also, I have some new autumn art lessons to Artastic Nation. So if you're looking for pre-planned, ready-made art lessons or projects that include full video art tutorials, student handouts, lessons, rubrics, and assessment, I have added some new autumn art lessons to both my Teachers Pay Teacher store and the Artastic Collective membership. You can find it in the autumn section of Holidays and Seasonal. If you are already a member, it's already there. So new this year is a primary mixed media leaf artwork. It's cute. Um, you can explore just painting with autumn colors, adding texture with uh, forks and stuff like that, and adding it to a line background. Um, that's very primary. So it's just a very, I'd say K to three at the most. Uh, for the older kids, I did more older artworks this year. So I did a black and white pumpkin Zen doodle painting. It's very beautiful. Very, very classy. They're going to love it. It's um, one of those art projects that it's simple, but it looks very complex when done. So it's going to give your students that huge confidence booster. They're going to love it. All right. And I also did a more complex one. This is more like middle school, high school level, but it's a birch forest artwork. So the classic birch forest artworks that you see all the time, I have lots of them, but this one's been done with India ink, which means that kids are going to have to pre-mix values with water and India ink in order to do this. So it's a lot more complex. Um, also when you do that, right, like India ink looks you can't really tell the value too much. Like you really have to uh, play with that medium and experiment and then layering the ink and letting it dry in layers to create a birch forest and then afterwards adding magazine clippings as the medium used for making the leaves on the artwork. So it really has an, a lot of texture, very intense value um, from the ink. It's just, you can't get any darker than India ink. I love it so much. Um, and then you have these very interesting texture leaves because of the magazine clippings on there. So that's really cool. I really enjoyed making that one. Definitely not an elementary one. That would be very frustrating for elementary students for sure. Just doing that India ink and creating values with it. Anyway, so I have also added an autumn artivity book. So in case you're looking for flexible and easy to teach lessons that are embedded with the elements of art and principles of design, um, check out my autumn autumn artivity book I've been making well I am making auto sorry I'm making artivity books for every single season and holiday this year because I think everybody's primarily back to in-person teaching um also I think we're all tired <laughs> so very tired and sometimes we just need to teach the curriculum but in a simplified way or just need a break and these artivity books are are very flexible. They, they can use any art medium. They will teach um, or they will uh, have lessons inspired by or based around the, some of the elements and some of the principles. So you don't have to feel guilty like you're giving a coloring sheet or whatever. I'm not digging, putting down coloring sheets because I made, I made coloring sheets. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, if you need it, go for it. Like this is, going on quite a long time and teaching is very challenging right now but also we're expected to pretend like in the classroom that this isn't happening to make the experience really good for kids so if you need a break and you want them to be engaged at the same time my activity books that is what they're designed for my friend and then they're good forever too like you can use these hand them as just like individual handouts or as a book like they're they're very flexible it's individual handouts or as a book so you it'll last you a while okay so you can check out those in my teachers pay teachers store you can get them with your artistic collective membership already it's in there um unless it's like a holiday or season that hasn't happened yet like it's not there then because I haven't made it yet, <laughs> but it will be. <laughs> I mean what I say, so there you go. Um, you can also find the link to my Teachers Pay Teachers store in my blog post. Um, show notes for this episode if you go to my blog at misartastic.com or find it in the episode show notes on this episode on whatever you're listening this to this on. Whatever. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I'm Kathy McGivern, Ms. Artastic. Welcome to Season 2, and I'm signing off. Remember to tune back in in a couple weeks. I will be having a whole 
bunch of ideas, as in five ideas for Halloween art projects, my friend. And then I'll be going into art sub tub, art on a cart tips, all kinds of stuff. I'm, I, I know we all need lots of ideas right now, and I'm, I'm coming up with them. So stay tuned. Everything's gonna be my theme this season is called flexible choice based. <laughs> so if you're wanting some check flexible choice based ideas this year um hey make sure you hit that follow button or subscribe button or whatever it is and uh stay tuned all right misertastic signing off